Spin Ultimate, official sponsor of Rise Up. Today we're going to be talking about the triangle marking scheme. The triangle marking scheme is a plan for how to attack each thrower and where to limit their options and how to catch up to their pivots. Assuming that you understand the physical fundamentals of marking, it's vital to have a plan when you approach each thrower. If you know what you want to take away, you can align your marking defense with what the downfielders are doing to have a cohesive seven-person defensive set. The goal is to stop the quickest throws, the throws that hurt downfield and defenders' chances the most. After that, we want to use a couple of different fundamental tricks to catch up to the thrower to relieve some of the advantages that they have. The goal is to force throwers to pivot. While many people talk about pivoting as a good thing for throwers, the best throwers stand still and stare at the field. We want to make those throwers pivot so they spend more time moving than they are analyzing and taking apart a defense. The triangle marking scheme has three different components. The first is that we need to stop the shown throw. Good throwers hold one throw available so it can be quickly released, and we need to make sure that we are physically blocking that throw without fouling. Once we've stopped the shown throw, we need to be able to move our feet to stop the first pivot. This requires moving far enough that the thrower is forced to pivot a second time. Because throwers have the offensive advantage of knowing where the race is going and when it's going to start, the defense needs a trick to catch back up. This is the triangle move where we'll drop to a deeper depth to cut off the second pivot throw. Once you've used this trick, you need to re-engage with your initial mark and try to get the thrower into one more triangle scheme. Today we're going to be talking about the triangle marking scheme. The triangle scheme is a way to control the thrower and limit them to only the throws that we want to allow. Here, Sam as the thrower is starting with a forehand, so Jeremy's going to start his triangle marking scheme by stopping the shown throw. He's actually getting a hand up in the way of wherever the disc is going to the break side. So if Michelle were to make the first cut, as she goes, this hand is in the way, excellent. Too often, marks establish a position without reacting to this throw. So if Jeremy gets down into a nice athletic position, he's not stopping the shown throw. So if Michelle makes her cut, Sam can just throw it. And now we haven't really marked anything. Let's go back. So Jeremy needs to start the triangle by stopping the shown throw, okay? If he can do this, he's going to force Sam to pivot and move the disc to the other side of his body. Now his job is to get far enough to block that next throw. This is the second part of the triangle. So going back to the shown throw, coming over, blocking that next one. So really moving and get wide enough to send Sam back. Not wide enough to just maybe threaten a throw, but really get him pivoting. We wanna make throwers do lots of pivoting so they can't see the field. Ready? Stopping the shown throw, pivots, comes over. Now freeze it right over there, bring it over and freeze it. Now Jeremy stops this pivot, but at some point his thrower starts to be moving faster than he can move. As Sam comes back, stay here, he has an advantage now. He's gone over and back and he has an advantage through this lane. Jeremy is gonna win this by going into a triangle. Instead of just side to side, he's gonna come back and lengthen this distance and be able to stop this throw. So go from the start. So stopping the shown throw, pivot over. Good, drop back into the triangle. Good, and that gives him an angle to stop this inside out. Lastly, he needs to regain his positioning and stop the shown throw again. Okay, good, let's go from the top with the cutter. Ready, three, two, one, go. Stop the shown throw, the pivot, good, and drop. Good, nicely done. If we can do that, we can get a thrower up to stall three or four and prevent their downfield attacks. For the first part of this drill, Sam is limited to zero pivots. 
He's gonna start with the disc on one side of his body. It has to stay on that side of the body and he's gonna fight to break this mark. This is really gonna force Jeremy to stop the shown throw. Ready? And disc in. Stop that shown throw. Good, good. <laughs> Excellent. And, and this might feel a little bit silly, but it's gonna force us to get far enough over. Now, I want you to be far enough over that you can stop the shown throw from going to the break side. You don't need to be so far as to stop it entirely. So stay here, yeah. Ready? A little bit more to your right, good. Now your hand's up, and you're stopping the shown throw from going to the break side, and cutter. Good, good. You're gonna be surprised at how often Mark's can do this well. Good, new Mark. And three, two, one, stop that shown throw. Good, good. That's a good Mark. Next, stop that shown throw, good. Ooh, there it is. And we really wanna be moving that hand. Make it unpredictable. Good, come on up, Michelle, you're gonna mark. Good, a lot of energy here. He's showing forehand, so get your hand way up in front of that, way up in, and move more to your left, so you're really in front, there he is, and go. High hand, moving the hand, moving it, moving it, good. That's what we want, is to challenge that shown throw, good. Stop, more, more to your side, more, good. Now, if they do get that break off, come back, let's do that one more time. We have another disc. If they do get that break off, with just, without even using a pivot, that means we need to stop it even more. So not just blocking it with one hand out there, but moving over a little bit and making that hand in motion. Ready, and go. Good, excellent, next one. Let's start with the shown throw as a backhand, that was good. Showing a backhand, show it. Pete, get over enough to stop it, good. And disc it, good, good. Throwers, treat this serious, try to break it anyway. Like you're limited to this in a game. More, more, there it is. Good, next one. Good, nicely done. We wanna make these throws difficult. Now, the first part is to stop the shown throw. Our second part is to react to one pivot. We need to be able to move across with the thrower without fouling, because if we're fouling throwers, they can use our fouls against us. Also, it's bad spirit, and we want to be the best possible players we can. Stop the shown throw. Now in this drill, the thrower is limited to exactly one pivot. Jeremy can try to block, to try to break it on one side, or he can shift over and try to break it on the other side, but once he's there, he can't shift back. Ready? Cutter, the same thing, choose any target, here we go, and move with him. Good. Now if they easily get off that first one, let's try this one again. If they easily get off that first break, it means we're coming too far on that shown throw. We wanna stop the shown throw from going to the break side and be ready, because you know you've got it stopped. So when he starts to move, you know he's coming. Let's get quick back to it. Ready, stop that shown throw, more. Good, and move. Good, there we go, nicely done. Let's rotate through, let's get some reps at. Good. Good, Mark. Good, Mark. If we're forcing that throw wider than the thrower wanted it, we know we're getting the space. Come over, come over, come over. Good. I'm gonna mark you, Tian. Now, some of the time what you'll see is that you'll see the throwers over here, and if you're watching the disc, you've got this covered. If you're watching their eyes, you can see them start to creep over. You see that they're looking for that around break. They might be showing this, but if I see that Tien's looking for it, as he comes over, I'm ready. I know he's coming. I can anticipate it a little bit. Ready, disc in. So I'm stopping the shown throw, stopping the shown throw, and I'm ready here. I'm trying to force it up and wide. Good, next one. Good, one pivot only, one pivot only. Good. Good, high left hand, high left hand, and move. Good, nicely done. Even against a much taller person, you can mark really effectively if you're anticipating that pivot. Let's go, Marks, let's turn it on. This is a lot of pressure to put on our mark. We're gonna really force him to work. There's no defender downfield, get it. Good, good, anticipate. Good, and that's two pivots, right? Come across and back, that's a win in this drill. We're looking for anything that puts the disc a little bit behind the receiver. We're gonna go into the third part of this drill where we really work on that complete triangle. So Sam, I want you to start on the inside. Raj, stop the shown throw. 
One pivot, so pivot over. Good. Now when you pivot back, Raj, drop to depth, go. Good, and now regain your triangle, find that mark again. What I wanna do is I wanna start each mark out by going inside, around, inside, and then the cutter can go. So one complete triangle, and then a cutter. So Michelle, wait, throwers go. Good, and back. Now Michelle, go, good. Try to take him through the triangle again, good. That's what we want. And go, wait Sam. Good, bring him over, drop, and get to him. Now you're in. Good. Nicely done. Good. Inside, move with him, drop, and back to him. There's your triangle. Now you got him. Good. Okay, as markers, we're all getting, the throwers are doing a great job of throwing this high backhand. We're all throwing this high backhand. Let's get that hand up. It's totally okay to be beat by a good throw once. Everybody gets beat by good throws. But if you see that same throw happen to you twice, now it's time to change. They're saying that this is their release point, something else is not. Let's force them to something different. Here we go. Good, move him, drop it. Good, and back scramble. Now you're in. Good, nice. Now we're making him a stretchy throw a little bit. Here we go. Good, take him through one triangle. Good, and drop, and back to him. Good, that's better. Take it through a triangle, good, and around, and drop, and back to it, and move those arms. Good, 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 there it is. Nice, excellent, excellent. For any individual mark, you'll know that you're doing this well if you can force the thrower to pivot three times. That's an excellent mark. Over the course of a game or a tournament, you'd like your thrower to average more than one and a half pivots every time they touch the disc. Up to John.